I don't know about Bitcoiner myself who stopped being a Bitcoiner. 21 billion Bitcoin divided by 8 billion people. Then you are at a 0.002625 Bitcoin per person. And of course, the realistic number would be much less than that. Bitcoin has no top because fiat has no bottom. So you always will see how Bitcoin is rising. Work hard, save in Bitcoin. And I can actually retire on that or buy a home someday. That's just not possible with uh, fiat money and the fiat system where you can exploit others using the system, the Cantillon effect. And with Bitcoin, you can be greedy, but you need to provide value to other people. You can't get more Bitcoin other than providing value. There are people calculating the potential market cap of Bitcoin, but that's nonsense, in my opinion, because Bitcoin would be the thing you would price everything. When you look at I don't know, 2044 block subsidy, it will be less than 0.1 BTC. Everyone in the world, basically every miner, will be competing for 10 minutes for this 0.1 BTC. Just one bigger state says, hey, we are buying Bitcoin and we're backing our fiat currency with that. It's over. How did you get there to see Bitcoin as an insurance policy? So I have many friends who are no coiners or really don't want to hear anything about Bitcoin. And I always talk about it and they're like, ah, no, stop it. <laughs> and I mean, it, it, I understand it. Uh, basically everyone, when he's, he has, uh, hears about Bitcoin for the first time, he's like, ah, doesn't sound that great, especially because of the, I don't know, uh, things that the media publish oftentimes about Bitcoin regarding uh, regarding the energy usage and so on. And um, so, I mean, in the end, when you really have zero Bitcoin, you're betting that Bitcoin will not prevail, uh, prevail at 100%, basically. You're uh, just going with a huge risk, in my opinion. And I don't think that's, uh, that's rational. Um, so I think, um, we are so early in Bitcoin, and I think many people just misunderstand how early we are. But you can just, um, so when I'm talking about the Bitcoin insurance, I'm just saying, hey, just buy a little bit Bitcoin. And I mean, really, a little, little bit Bitcoin. And um, so I just took 21 million Bitcoin divided by around 8 billion people. And then you are at a 0 0.002625 Bitcoin per person. And of course, the realistic number would be much less than that, but that's basically the, the amount you should have at least. And that's the amount I also, uh, when there's a wedding, for example, I give the people that amount in Bitcoin. And uh, so I make sure people have these amount. That's everything what I want from people around, around me, family, friends, uh, just buy this amount of Bitcoin and I'm fine. I won't talk about Bitcoin with you again if you don't want to. But you are just, uh, you have an insurance, then when, Bit when Bitcoin gets big and really is something relevant in the future, you have enough Bitcoin that you won't be poor in a Bitcoin standard. That's basically the idea behind that. So that's the, the minimum amount of Bitcoin to make sure you have a Bitcoin insurance policy. Or, or could you even go lower than that, uh, depending on the time zone? Yeah, I think uh, like the zero, when you divide by 8 billion people and we have 21 million Bitcoin, there aren't 21 billion Bitcoin even yet. There are like 4 million coins lost. You also need to calculate the, the Satoshi, the Satoshi coins, the 1 million roundabout. Then you have all the companies, big ETFs, whatever that also have huge amount of Bitcoin. And we have billionaires and millionaires who also have much more Bitcoin than any, uh, any other person. So the realistic number would be far less than these 0 0.002625 bit BTC maybe just half of it, maybe just, I don't know. It's, I don't know, and you can calculate it, but these uh, 21 million Bitcoin divided by 8 billion people is at least the one you can, you can calculate and you can be sure that this is a, at least a, um, yeah, a number you can count on. Yeah, I always like to uh, calculate actually with, with 10 billion people and with 15 million Bitcoin, uh, the, the further out we go, I think population will, will continue to grow, hopefully. <laughs> and, <laughs> otherwise, we, we, we make some mistakes. Uh, and uh, Bitcoin will continue to, to get lost. I, I got a really interesting uh, question, <laughs> uh, I think, a few weeks ago on a podcast. Um, she basically asked me, what happens if we lose all the Bitcoin? Like <laughs> if the last, the last access, the last Satoshi also gets, gets lost. Like is that, is that the, the only way Bitcoin fails? Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> now I think uh, that's a 
I mean, how should that happen? You can always divide Bitcoin further. So there's, I don't see the problem there. But uh, I think, uh, I, you know, when you study Bitcoin, you just go through and think, hey, what could go wrong? And uh, when you start with it, when you start with learning Bitcoin, you are, oh, this could go wrong and that and this and everything. But it's more when you put more time in it, you realize, hey, there aren't so many things that could go wrong. And I think actually the maybe the biggest threat uh, to Bitcoin would be that someone, someone somewhere, sometime uh, comes to the idea that, hey, I don't know, I, this person somehow gets really much power and he gets the people to convince them that, hey, you should uh, change, you know, you should change the rules of Bitcoin to 50 million coins, whatever. You should give me some more rights in the protocol that I can censor people that isn't decentralized and censorship free anymore. And I mean, I just I can't imagine how that should happen um, because you always have uh, also this negative uh, scale effects. I don't know if that's the right word in English. I uh, hope you know what I mean. Um, so I really don't know how this should happen, but I think that's the biggest problem that people just forget what Bitcoin is and what it makes, what makes it Bitcoin, these rules. <laughs> But didn't we had that already kind of in 2017 with the, the, the block size was, I mean, it was not about increasing the, 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 uh, how many Bitcoin we have. It was about increasing the block size. Uh, there was like really popular faces and voices, uh, for increasing the block size, like the mining, uh, industry was, was for that. Like that, that's for me always the, uh, without that, um, I would see more danger to Bitcoin with that. Bitcoin kind of has proven that it's really resilient against those kind of attacks. I, I, like with the block size wars, when I started that, I really got confident uh, about Bitcoin. I don't know about you. Yes, exactly. That's uh, how I see it too. Um, I mean, you could see that even when there are large entities like Coinbase and so on, really large players in the space and the miners and everyone says, hey, let's change Bitcoin. But the nodes back then, they know the rules, <laughs> the Bitcoin rules. And they decided, no, we keep it clean, the old school Bitcoin way. And uh, as long as, and yeah, we can now say, uh, say yeah, that happens. Uh, big players couldn't change Bitcoin. So that's really good. And that's also something, that's something because I, uh, that makes me think that the scenario is uh, quite, quite unlikely. But I don't really see more likely scenarios that make Bitcoin go uh, crash or, or go away forever, you know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's a, it's an interesting, uh, thing because like, uh, I think, um, a lot of big Bitcoin critics, uh, over time turn to bit, uh, big Bitcoin advocates as they study what could go wrong with Bitcoin. And then they're like, Oh, oh, that avenue actually is not that, uh, likely. Oh shit. You have the same class as me. I saw it. <laughs> oh shit. I, I thought I'm Post, the only, yeah. so, so, sorry for, for, for that confusion. Like I was the only weirdo that has all the strings with a one liter class. Uh, <laughs> it's something called shot glass in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like the, the, the very, very short ones. You also have vodka in there, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. No beer. It's too unhealthy. <laughs> No, oh, so, so, sorry, uh, that, that I just had to notice that because, uh, a lot of guests call me crazy that I have like this big glass. It's also a heavy glass. If there's like one liter water in there and the glass itself is heavy, like it's, it's sometimes really, uh, heavy to carry. Uh, but, uh, I forgot where I was, uh, going with, with the, um, yeah, the, the Bitcoin critics, yeah. Yeah. The, the resilience of, of Bitcoin. It, it kind of forms your resilience, uh, talking about Bitcoin. Um, you mentioned, I, I wanted to go another avenue down, but, uh, let's, let's go, uh, that one argument also down. Um, th you mentioned the energy FUD, uh, in the beginning when people think about Bitcoin. Um, one thing that is fascinating for me and, and I talked with someone that is in Bitcoin since 10 years and he makes actually content around Bitcoin since 10 years. He's Bitcoin Espanol. He was probably the first Spanish, uh, Bitcoin content creator. Uh, and he basically opened my eyes to, he thought, uh, in 10 years ago, the same things that I think now about Bitcoin and how people can wake up to the Bitcoin and people will slowly get it. And he's like, yeah, still 10 years after that, my friends and family, even though they saw the wealth growth, they still call me crazy. They still have all those misconceptions of Bitco about Bitcoin in their head and it doesn't get better. And, and then I was like, oh, shit, uh, is that in 10 years still the case? Uh, is, is something changing? It's like, 
do you see those misconceptions like the energy fund and on all those those weird things about bitcoin going away anytime anytime soon and especially with blackrock and really the big players now coming into the scene is that that story now changing over the next 10 years or will in 10 years the, the people still say the same thing i think so so i um the energy fund you're seeing so much uh so many papers, scientific papers being released that say, hey, Bitcoin isn't that bad as you think, and just continues. And, and I think it's just really, you can't say that anymore if you're an honest critic or an honest journalist. Um, so this kind of fight is fading. I mean, maybe there are coming, maybe in the future there will be some uh, some other stuff like, I don't know, Bitcoin is far right or something like that. Uh, they made something up, uh, made something up maybe. But um, yeah, in the end, I think, people are more getting it. Uh, it's it's basically a Lindy effect uh, somehow. So you hear about Bitcoin a few years ago already and uh, you saw so it rise up and crash and you were, like, you were like, yeah, okay, that's it. Bitcoin is gone. And then a few, a few years later, you hear, I don't know, the friends, whoever also talk about Bitcoin. You're like, hey, that's still alive. I don't know. And you just hear, keep hearing about Bitcoin and you also, while you're hearing about Bitcoin, you see that Bitcoin is rising in price. Like Max, uh, like Max Kaiser said, Bitcoin has no top because fiat has no bottom. So you always will see how Bitcoin is rising, and um, that's just make this will make you curious. I mean, people are greedy, especially fiat people, and no coiners are, for the most part, uh, fiat guys who just uh, need to beat inflation. And either they know it or they don't know it, but they need to beat inflation, and so they will really. Uh, like something that goes up in value and they will be more open i think the longer bitcoin exists the more people will say hey that's interesting and the more people will uh, have a better or more positive image of bitcoin and that's what i think and that's what i also would say and i'm already uh yeah watching it's it doesn't happen that fast of course it will ha take years but uh, i think it's slowly changing like the energy fund yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, if, especially if you look at the Bitcoin only content develop, I think that was not even a thing yes. like in 2020. Uh, and slowly with 2020 and 2021, it really developed so many Bitcoin only content creators and, and Bitcoin only uh, podcasts and, and speakers that uh, and conferences like how how big those Bitcoin only conferences like Bitcoin Prague or something like that is. It's, it's, it's astonishing. And there's like really high signal there. I, I love to see that. Definitely, yeah. That's uh, so. As you might have heard, I'm German. So when I started, uh, I don't know. I, I got into Bitcoin and shitcoins in 2019, roundabout. And um, when I started with Bitcoin, there weren't any Bitcoin maxis who did YouTube videos, basically. So I didn't know any of them. And uh, with 2020, there are also like one or two people, maybe. And that's what I started my own YouTube channel in 2022, just because there weren't any. Bitcoin only content in Germany. Uh, people told me, yeah, when you look in, uh, in English content, there's uh, much of uh, many videos on Bitcoin only, but in the German space, at least, uh, that's not the case. And that's why I started to yeah, do this kind of videos, explain Bitcoin and, uh, and explain what makes it different to shit coins and so on. And uh, yeah, that's something uh, that's also changing and makes me much more uh, positive for the future of Bitcoin and the speed of adoption. At least in the German space, but I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, I'm actually really impressed, and that's why I do it in English because uh, the German Bitcoin uh, content space is really good. Like uh, I, I speak with people in the Spanish community, in the French community, in other communities, um, and they just tell me. Or oh, in the Hungarian community, uh, I also spoke with someone, and they just tell me, "Oh, that that's like not like one two really good people that make really nice content and in German there's so many great ones like and that was one of my reasons like oh like the, it doesn't matter if I'm doing English or German because the competition is in both quite high honestly uh, and that's why I was like oh, I want to speak with everyone in the world I want to speak with Asians I want to speak with Africans I want to speak with Americans 
Uh, and that's why I force every German to speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I hope I hope they, they still like me after doing, doing the in, English uh, conversion <laughs> too much. Um, you you mentioned also something interesting: the Lindy effect. It comes up in in Bitcoin conversations a lot, and uh, I think um, uh, not every Bitcoin is aware of that. Um, can you quickly explain like what is the Lindy effect and why it's important in the context of of Bitcoin? Yeah, it's basically, uh, it says it's a rule of thumb, so it's not a really hard uh, rule. Uh, but you can say that uh, if a technology or idea exists for, let's say, 10 years, it's likely that this technology or idea will continue to at least exist in 10 more years. And the more it uh, lives, the longer it will live. Basically, that's the Lindy effect roundabout. And um, yeah, that's, that's some effects uh, that, you can always say, hey, Bitcoin has the biggest Lindy effect. It's the first cryptocurrency. And uh, yeah, every other cryptocurrency came after that. And so also has a, a, slow, a small Lindy effect. So the Lindy effect and the network effect basically are the two biggest effects maybe when it comes to Bitcoin and why it's Bitcoin only and not shitcoins. And you make a lot of uh, a lot of content. You you make also content around uh, uh, altcoins <laughs> and, and shitcoins, uh, which is uh, really fascinating to to see. Uh, and you make it uh, even a, you you make fun content about it, uh, as I remember it. Uh, I liked some of your videos. Um, my, my first question about it is like, why are they still around? Like, <laughs> what's holding the altcoins? And it's a it's a quite big market also like it's not like a, a, a such a, a small small market it's not like one percent of bitcoin market it's like um probably like a little less than 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 half of it or something like that like the, the mm. whole altcoin market is is uh, smaller than the whole bitcoin market but it's 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 catching on it depends on if you count in the stable coins uh, i don't know if it's really crypto it's it's more yeah, like fiat. That's, that's um that's also we already talked about that um, in a few years back then, it was like Bitcoin was an energy killer. It was so bad for the environment, you know, all this fat. And this fat somehow starts to disappear. And uh, back then, everyone was talking about, oh, proof of work is much energy. If, uh, it's not energy efficient. We have proof of stake. That's much better. And um, I, I have to, at least how I see it, it's more like proof of stake is now getting, uh, yeah, it's not that hot topic anymore. People realize that it's basically just proof of wealth and it's just a fiat system on steroids. And so they are uh, promote the new, sh I won't call any names here, but there are new shit coins who uh, do proof of work and basically just copy the Bitcoin marketing and just say lightning doesn't work and more solution. Bitcoin can't scale. And that's my project is basically just like Bitcoin with proof of work. And every other coin is also a shit coin. I agree with you. But this one coin is, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it's scalable because it isn't a blockchain. It's a different kind of blockchain that isn't called blockchain. So it doesn't have the blockchain trilemma and so on. So the marketing changes. And I think we're heading somewhere where I don't know what you could uh, still continue. Um, some, sometime there won't be any uh, new marketing. I think any new crypto marketing ideas that you can uh, copy. At least I think that. So, uh, yeah. I started my YouTube channel in 2022. In the middle, it was a really deep bear market. And uh, I was like, yeah, I could now tell people what is a blockchain, what is a cryptocurrency. But there weren't any new people there in the market. So I just said, I thought, hey, we have so many shit corners here in the crypto space. And I just, maybe I can talk to them with a little bit more advanced videos and stuff. Um, so not really that beginner friendly. And uh, so I can just convert some uh, some shit coiners to bitcoiners and get them uh, on yeah the right side or however you want to call it. I mean, yeah. we kind of see uh, with Ethereum since they switched from proof of work to proof of stake. I think that's the, the that's the main and the most popular example for me uh, that proof of stake is losing in the free market. I mean, it's yes. now what, two, two and a half, three years, something like that. I think two and a half, maybe a uh, year since they switched. So it's not that long of a time zone. So that will be more obvious in like five, 10 years span. If, if, if you're still around back, uh, then, 
uh, but it's it's really sinking since like three and a half years, I think, uh, against Bitcoin, and that that speaks volume to like, oh, the free market <laughs> doesn't like uh, proof of stake. It it actually doesn't make sense proof of stake because it's just basically a stock, and then a stock has to really prove itself with a nice product and service. If they cannot deliver, uh, they will go away. Uh, which I, I hear that argument a lot that um, we will have in the future just proof of stake companies and not the traditional stock market. It's it's also like uh, interesting because I don't think that the government even want uh, will let that happen. Uh, yeah, uh, and and and, <laughs> and, and, awesome. and this this argument also make Bitcoin is that uh, against against Bitcoin that the governments will not let this happen. The difference is you cannot turn off Bitcoin, but you can turn off every shitcoin. Like that's the that's the main yes. difference for me. Yes, like you said. I mean, you can basically just do a few phone calls and say, "Hey, Amazon." AWS shut down some big, uh, some Ethereum nodes, and then you always had and just a few other co phone calls, and it's already uh, in huge problems. And that's what you can't do to Bitcoin. Like you said, it's uh, Ethereum already lost over fifty percent since the merge when it switched to proof of stake. And you, all can, you also can see the uh, when I really I was on my YouTube channel, I was talking, yeah, there won't be a, a Ethereum spot ETF uh, really. And I was really convinced. Michael Saylor also said it, and um, then there was the Ethereum spot ETF and I got really the shit coiners were angry and the, they made fun of me. But you can see now uh, these Ethereum spot ETFs really they don't have any traction. Nobody wants them. Uh, there's basically no money flowing in, just out. <laughs> and that's not comparable to Bitcoin. So I think that's, yeah, you can see that how it's happening. The free market has decided and it's continuing to fall towards zero like every other shit coin compared to Bitcoin. Let's talk about something um, more interesting than shit coins. <laughs> Let's talk about um, why you also have, I think, one video, uh, maybe it was someone else, um, the significance of one Bitcoin. We talked before of like uh, the insurance policy and how you get to like 0.00, .00 uh, to Bitcoin or something like that uh, to have like at least some insurance policies. But most people have at least now the possibilities to buy more than that, uh, especially if we consider the audience. Uh, my audience is like 50% America, then the UK, Canada, uh, Europe. So like uh, most of my audience probably has the, the capacity to buy uh, way more than uh, just a few Satoshis. Um, wh why is that whole coin of status and that the significance of 100 million Satoshis or one Bitcoin, uh, su such a big one. Uh, and uh, how how reachable is that that goal still? I think it's just psychological. It's like you you want to have one wall thing. And when you have one wall Bitcoin, you want to have two wall Bitcoins. And then you want to have five. It, 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 won't, it won't stop. So it's just greed. And it's natural, I think. it's uh, Bitcoin makes greed uh, somewhat good the first time. Not like in the fiat system where you can exploit others uh, using the system, the Cantillon effect. And with Bitcoin, you can yeah, have be greedy, but you need to provide value to other people. You can't get more Bitcoin other than providing value. And um, yeah, so that's one Bitcoin. Of course, it's a, especially today, it's from some people reachable. But uh, when you consider that we're really speaking about Bitcoin being the discovery of absolute mathematical scarcity, it's uh, yeah, it's so much more worth than it's today. Uh, you can't, I mean, there is always, when you look at YouTube or so, there are people calculating the market cap, the potential market cap of Bitcoin, but that's nonsense, in my opinion, because Bitcoin would uh, just, Bitcoin would be the thing, you would price everything. Uh, you would say, hey, the house costs today one Bitcoin, and in 10 years, it only costs two point, uh, 0 0.2 Bitcoin, whatever. And that's what makes sense in the long run. And you, one Bitcoin is, it's a large amount. We already talked about it in the beginning. And I think it's much more, uh, when you want to see how valuable a Bitcoin in the future is, I think it's much more interesting to look at the block subsidy in the next few years and decades. So the amount of Bitcoin that will continue to uh, go go unlocked, basically. Um, we already have like, I don't know, 19.7 million Bitcoin that are available at the moment. And uh, so sort the of last 1.3 million Bitcoin we mine for the next uh, 120 years, around about. And I mean, just we have 20, uh, 2024, and when you look at I don't know, 2044, basically in 20 years, the block subsidy there will be every 10 minutes, around about, there will be less than 0 
uh, 0.1 BTC that is being issued in just uh, 20 years. So that's uh, that's um, the whole world, everyone in the world, basically every miner will be competing for 10 minutes for this 0.1 BTC. Of course, additional um, the transaction fees that will be rising, but I think it's it's a number you can yeah, imagine that it's uh, really it's worth something. And it's uh, maybe worth more than uh, people might imagine today. Uh, yeah, so I don't think it's necessary to be a wall coiner, but one Bitcoiner. Um, it's better to, I think it's better to start calculating in Satoshis, or Satoshi, not in a uh, wall BTC, because it's not everyone would be a Satoshi uh, a Bitcoiner, a wall, a wall coiner, but many people can be a Satoshi millionaire. And I think that's more uh, the approach. I think even we need to break down if we really want to use Bitcoin once a Toshi into more units uh, at some point, at least, um, which is really interesting when what you talked about, uh, when people ask you, oh, what's the future market cap of, of Bitcoin? I get that question also, um, a lot, especially from people that have no Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, yeah. like, oh yeah, what, but what, like I'm in stocks, like I always calculate what's the potential market cap of, of a stock. And I was also in that world, like, and I also looked at Bitcoin the first time like that because I came from that stock world. So I get where the people are coming from. Um, but it does not make sense, uh, if we calculate Bitcoin in fiat because, yeah, fiat will be gone at, at some point, at least uh, as, as I see it. Uh, but how does it make sense or how could we calculate what Bitcoin's um, full potential is? Because at, at some point, most of the people will uh, if, if hybrid Bitcoinization is true, at some point, everyone will have Bitcoin and will transact in Bitcoin. And then we ha kind of have reached uh, Bitcoin's full potential. Maybe we <laughs> civilize other planets and then they also adopt Bitcoin. So like, it, it's an infinity <laughs> thing, definitely. Uh, but but you know what I mean? Like if, if we reach all 10 billion people that might be on Earth in, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, um, uh, it, it's hard for me to calculate what's the full potential of Bitcoin if we are completely successful uh, and the time frame is, is uh, impossible to, to, to suggest anyways. They are like those percentages model or like what have we now as, as total net assets and what percentage can we reach? How do you look at uh, that? How do you calculate that? Yeah, I also, I mean, for clickbait and for get views, you uh, or, uh, sometimes or, uh, do some videos like, hey, Bitcoin could rise to put here some price and then people click on it. And then I also show the well, uh, market caps of, you know, uh, the real estate market or the stock market, bond market, whatever. Bitcoin would basically just overtake all of these. And, but you can't just say, oh, this, this market is like, I don't know, 100 billion big and it would just uh, go into Bitcoin and Bitcoin will rise by 100 billion. That's not the case because Bitcoin, there is a, the, the multiplier effect. So because Bitcoin is absolute scarcity, there's a, uh, for every dollar that's flowing into Bitcoin, Bitcoin rises for X amount. So, uh, I don't know, maybe some banks calculated that this, this round, I don't know, 10, 10 X or something like that. It's really round about. And it would just, as uh, scarce as Bitcoin gets and as more people get Bitcoin and want to hold it and don't want to sell it for euro, they will, the multiply effect will steadily increase. So one euro or one dollar that's flowing into Bitcoin will make Bitcoin market cap much bigger and the Bitcoin price much bigger. So uh, you can't say, yeah, when, when the real estate market is completely flooded by, of course, the real estate market uh, still has a use case for being a, a home, but it wouldn't be an investment like that anymore, like today in the fiat world. So yeah, when all these uh, things, when Bitcoin overtakes all these markets, it doesn't make any sense to calculate it in euro. You need to calculate it in Bitcoin because I don't, I don't see what really you can calculate the price of Bitcoin in the long run, I think. But you can just say, hey, look at that. And it also will, yeah, rise more than that, maybe. Maybe we have to start to calculating Bitcoin in, in, in gold because gold will, will be probably, uh, around, but the, the financial energy will also be sucked out of it. Maybe, maybe it makes sense to like just compare it to like houses, gold and, and, and all those things. Like how many houses will you be able to buy with 0 0.1 Bitcoin on and, and those kind of comparisons? That could be interesting. But then there's also like in what area are those houses and then, how good are the houses? Like, like that. There's a lot of weird things happening. Probably gold is the 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 best calculator in in which yeah, we can yeah. calculate Bitcoin. I think so too. Um, 
I mean, you can also say, yeah, when Bitcoin rises to 10 million someday, but when Bitcoin is on at 1 billion, uh, 10, 10 million, um, the money that makes it rise to that price would also be, uh, yeah, vacuumed from, uh, all the other assets like housing. So you would have a Bitcoin price of around 10 million, but the housing prices would also fall because this money is flowing into Bitcoin. And you also need to calculate that. So it's, yeah, it's also, I don't know, it's uh, quite interesting, but you can come to a conclusion, I think, in the end, uh, how fast or which price Bitcoin will ri uh, reach at any point in time. So uh, trading isn't an option, I think. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> If you watch my podcast already for more than two times, you know how extremely passionate I am about self-custody. And the first very, very, very important step to self-custody is always getting yourself a hardware wallet. And I have one for you here. This is the Bitcoin only edition from the Bitbox, my favorite single signature hardware wallet on the market. Another really important piece of self-custody if you have a hardware wallet is the backup of the seed phrase. And Bitbox made the perfect solution to back up your seed phrase. They made a reusable steel wallet. Check out that beauty. It's durable and extremely heavy if i put it on the desk i seriously fear for my own table it's so so heavy and durable i love it this is where my seed phrase is secure go to bitbox.swiss robin to get your bitbox and if you use code robin you even get five percent off of your complete order and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you You have to have the most secure self-custody setup. You have to secure your own devices. You have to protect your privacy. You have to set up an inheritance plan. And depending on where you live, you even want to have a plan B, a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really, really wrong. And through all those steps, the Bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made an perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only and coin vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing genesis edition of their watch collections you have the date of the first ever mined bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in i love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions i love those watches so so much uh, I, i mean i, I kind of have to ask at this point um what's your thoughts on on the bitcoin power law power law uh, i I, it's for, I'm not that big into it, but uh, as far as I heard, it, it's more like the stock to flow model. I don't know. It's, um, yeah, then people say, yeah, but it's, it's the power law is actually a real thing that exists. I, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's just when you calculate prices for the future, you can't be right. You, maybe you might be right, but it's, you're just guessing. Maybe it's a better guess than just, uh, I don't know, throwing a, I don't know, going, playing roulette or something like that, but, but it's, it's not better. It's not really better. Uh, so I don't uh, think much of that. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it has very wide ranges also. Uh, um, so now I'm like, ah, okay, uh, you, you could be right. Uh, and also, uh, I think the, the, Uh, some of the proponents say like it 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 will break anyways at some point and and we have to keep updating it's like yeah okay then then it's like a little bit like the on-chain analysts uh that can tell you about realized profits and unrealized profits uh and if we're in a bear market or a bull market i mean if if you're um 
if you have the de decision to make to make a big investment now or later and you can look at all the statistics and you're like okay now we are kind of in a bear market whereas we're kind of in a bull market maybe it may helps you to make decisions financially but honestly i would not even go that route down because most people probably everyone will get burned <laughs> when they do <laughs> it like that so uh, i i it's fun to talk about uh and i had a lot of uh, power law people already on uh, and it's really fascinating because there's like a, a whole science things behind it and i only yeah. understand 10 percent of it but i would <laughs> never trade my bitcoin on on top of that there's also the point um if uh, let's say you have a range of i don't know what's the power law for 20 30 i don't know you you don't yeah, know 20, right? 20, 35, I think, is the range between 500,000 and 2 million. Uh, I think okay. uh, that's something that I remembered. I mean, you always, you just measuring these prices in, in euro or dollar. That doesn't make sense because, uh, yeah, when the money supply rises, it's also, you also need to calculate the inflation, the money inflation. And on the other side, you also have, I mean, what would happen if uh, the USA would say tomorrow, hey, we just bought, I don't know, 2 million Bitcoin, we just mined them, whatever. We are on them and we um, just back the dollar with it somehow. They don't need to uh, have it exchangeable like with the gold standard, but at least uh, just buy it as a treasury, uh, as a, uh, I forgot the word, you know what I mean. Um, then everyone would just start buying Bitcoin and uh, a Bitcoin rally would start. And the last few, I mean, there are like I don't know, 2 million Bitcoin on exchanges or something like that. And with these Bitcoin are gone, it's like the Bitcoin price will just go up. And uh, then the power law is basically just, I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, I don't think that we, I think we would then exceed the uh, 2 million by 2030 something. So, uh, yeah, like you said, I wouldn't trade for that. Maybe, yeah, might have luck, but. Which, which is a which is a little bit interesting. More interesting to me is the power law in gold. There's actually like a, a Bitcoin power law that is also based on gold versus not the US dollars, um, which captures more of the actual growth of Bitcoin and less the, the, the inflationary thing. Because I think the power law in US dollars will be broken just because of inflation. And the, the Bitcoin power law, maybe based on gold, maybe it has. But yeah, as, as you said, like, as, I, I just I feel the obligation uh, to all the power law advocates that I already had uh, was on my show that uh, at least ask the question when, when we come to that topic. <laughs> what would my guests think about that? I, w I, I just want to, I want to know, I would never trade on, on that thing. And even power law advocates said to that, like, don't sell your Bitcoin because of the power law. And they think that's a healthy uh, thing to say. If, if you want to make the Bitcoin growth in the past more descriptive and more understandable why it grows like that, yeah, you can do that. But uh, don't uh, don't get a loan of, of Bitcoin for uh, five million dollars in the next five years because the power says so. Uh, that's probably a, a stupid thing to do. But you made the the point that uh, we will be at the point where um, uh, Bitcoin doesn't uh, isn't only like a small asset, but could be the world reserve asset. Uh, I think the strategic reserve asset uh, was also the word you were looking for before with the treasury of the, yes. the states. Um, do we actually have a chance of, of separating money from state like we did with religion and other things? Yeah, I think we already did somehow, at least for, I think for your part, for my part, we somehow did it for ourselves. Of course, on the, on the wide scale, yeah, we still have states who print money and also uh, influence our life with that, with fiat, fiat, fiat money, but the power is steadily going away. I mean, like we already talked a few minutes earlier, um, people start to realize and then the effect is growing, network effect is growing. People see Bitcoin is getting uh, coming back every time, every time stronger than before. And people will just see, hey, this thing just doesn't seem to die and it just keep rising in price. So I might get into it. And then you have the well, Bitcoin rabbit hole story. The people get into Bitcoin and just put more time in it, learn about it. And everyone who holds Bitcoin is basically just opting out of the system. And it's not like binary, it's not you have, uh, you're completely fiat and then you're completely Bitcoin, but you're going to Bitcoin, a Bitcoin system. And every, I mean, we can see it um, every few years. To, you can really see that many people come into the cycle and also stay there and don't disappear. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, um, we just need to uh, get bigger um, on a, also on a national level. 
And we already already saw that uh, in the I mean the USA have the biggest and uh, most important capital market in the world. Um, they have the world reserve currency, and yeah, Donald Trump and uh, other pre presidential candidates already talked about um, yeah buying Bitcoin and um, to as a strategic reserve uh, reserve asset. So we already are at the point in history. I wouldn't have thought that like. By, uh, uh, I would have said it's like 2030, uh, a presidential candidate would talk about that, but we already had it now. And I think it won't take so long. And people, it's like just game theory. If just one bigger state says, hey, we are buying Bitcoin and we're backing our fiat currency with that, it's over basically. It's not over, but it's uh, really heavily increasing the adoption rate. And um, then we have a, I mean, the real, 100% completion of money and state. I don't know if we will actually uh, witness it with our, with our own eyes, with our own eyes. But um, in the future, at least, we will see how it uh, will come to this. Let's say that. It's it surprised also me at the whole. Like when I came into 2020 in, in Bitcoin, uh, I didn't had El Salvador in 2021 uh, making it legal tender, and now they start buying it. Like all the things kind of move very fast if if i'm honest did you see uh, i think it was yesterday or even the day uh, on all my feeds that trump made the first bitcoin uh, transaction <laughs> and it was like the kind of the first actual uh, united states president that made a, a bitcoin transaction yeah i saw the video but it was more like uh, the first presidential candidate who stood next to some guys paying with Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't think he used it as himself, but uh, at least, you know, he uses Bitcoin as marketing. That's the point. Uh, so it doesn't matter what you think about Trump. The presidential candidate is uh, advertising with uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I, I love the so, other yeah. video that came out of uh, of it where he said, like, get your crypto burgers, get your crypto burgers. And someone in mm -hmm. the back, like, it's a Bitcoin burger, not a crypto burger. <laughs> <laughs> and Trump then is again says, "Yeah, get your crypto burgers or stuff like that." He keeps <laughs> calling it crypto. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think for him it's uh, just the same word at that point. Like it's it's yes. just like yeah, Bitcoin, crypto, play with your things. What did you think actually of of the significance of of Trump's speech and of of Trump's things that he, he said? Because it's like uh like two sides to like oh it's it's massive that he was even at the conference and then the other side is like oh he's a shit coiner he doesn't know what he's talking about anyways. So it's, I think, the symbol himself that he's at the conference, a Bitcoin conference, and speaking about Bitcoin and crypto. Uh, I think that's a really big symbol. But the speech itself it was the first Trump speech I listened to. Uh, and I really, um, he didn't say anything really that uh, blow my mind, let's say that. Um, so it, it, I think he also, I mean, there are other people like Block Trainer, he says that Trump is really separating Bitcoin and crypto when he speaks about it. He always says, Bitcoin and crypto, so he's not speaking about the crypto space, so that's a good point. But I don't think that he really gets what Bitcoin is. He just uses, is he just sees, hey, so many people use Bitcoin in my country, and uh, I might uh, just use it as advertising and uh, talk to these voters. And there are many voters who are Bitcoiners, and also crypto guys. And I don't know, it's it's um, Trump is already working on a crypto project now. Um, I, I don't get someone something with financial some buzzwords, you know, and um, I really don't know what this is le leading and heading. Um, yeah, so you can see with that that he isn't uh, really at least a real Bitcoiner, let's say it that way, or a Bitcoin maxi. He is uh, more like a crypto guy. Um, let's see how how it plays out. Let's call it that way. I think his, his shit corner read that he does is uh, just a... Uh um uh, getting getting money for his uh, campaign i don't know yes, maybe something like that too. uh and but i think it's very bullish that if he comes if he becomes the president i think now it's like a little bit more on, on his side versus kamala um if he comes the president then there's also a vivek ramoswavi on his team and rfk on his team and those two people seem to understand bitcoin on a way deeper level, uh, they're, yes. they're not a full Bitcoin maxis, but they are 
uh, way deeper already down the rabbit hole. And you could see it in the, especially in the speech of RFK. I was, I was seeing the whole speech and I was like impressed by him. When you compare that speech to the one year ago speech, that was like a massive increase in knowledge. Like he really, um, learned a lot or at least got to learn a lot. Um, uh, and they, they, they are way, way more down the rabbit hole. And just my hope is, uh, like, I don't care who's going to be the president in America because like, <laughs> I'm not in America. Uh, but, but, uh, if, if they, if that's the administration and there are like two, three really big Bitcoin advocates in there that might influence the president's decision, uh, that, that might just accelerate the Bitcoin adoption. Even if Camilla, <laughs> even I have a small group, a Telegram group where I talk with, with people on a daily basis and, and, and that we have a discussion now going on if, if for the Bitcoin adoption, it might even be, be better if Camilla Harris is in there because there might be more money printing and might be more chaos. But I'm like, no, there, there will be still a lot of chaos with Trump also. Yeah, I don't really know who's better for Bitcoin in the, in the long run. Um, but there's also the point that Every Bitcoiner, you know, basically, uh, I don't know a Bitcoin, but Bitcoiner myself who uh, stopped being a Bitcoiner. Maybe they aren't interested in Bitcoin that that uh, like like in the past, but they are still Bitcoiners. And uh, when you consider that there are already Bitcoin maxis in the Trump administration, um, how would it look in uh, five years or four years? They are just would uh, I mean these people already understand Bitcoin at a deeper level. And it will just increase, I think, and there will just be more people understanding it and more people saying, hey, let's buy this. Let's get a, let's get ahead of other countries. And um, this is happening worldwide right now. And um, just because of the speech Trump did and also RFK, um, it's now a topic for every other, at least every other, uh, um, I don't know, government at least should uh, look at it and uh, yeah, just, just consider, hey, there is a potential uh, president talking about Bitcoin and uh, that might be interesting for us too. So let's see how it happens. And it's a really interesting uh, point. It's uh, when, when you said ahead of other countries, I immediately thought of the European Union and, and uh, how I basically had heard nothing in the EU election. And even like now Austria has or has elections uh, I, I don't hear anything about Bitcoin, like not even a little bit, not even negative things. I didn't I just don't hear anything, yes. which is the most con concerning for me uh, for the European Union. Um, is there any, uh, because you're in Germany, is there any talk in, in Germany or did you see, hear anything about the EU and what's your, what's your take on the Americans are already talking a lot about uh, Bitcoin and there are presidents that visit like pub key uh, bars and, and all those <laughs> things. And they are speaking at the Bitcoin conferences versus, yes, we also have Bitcoin conferences in Europe. There are uh, politicians there like Joanna Qatar, uh, who sh she is there and some other uh, people, but not like really high ranking um, in the executive branch uh, politicians. Uh, so like, what's your take on that? Uh, we might have a faster separation of money and state here in Europe, maybe, because when you look at the EU, they don't talk, like I said, they don't talk about Bitcoin. They really have no clue. And uh, I don't think there's a master plan behind it. I really think they don't have a clue and uh, they're getting in trouble in the future. And um, But when you look at Germany or the world German speaking, so also Austria and Swiss, um, we can see that uh, when, at least when you look, you can't really say there are so many uh, Bitcoiners, but like Block Trainer, he's a German speaking guy and he has, I think, even the largest Ger Bitcoin only education channel on YouTube. So that's a really big thing. And when you look at the Bitcoin notes, Bitcoin full notes, of course, you can't really know really. It's just roundabout numbers, but you can see that uh, the Germans almost have as, uh, as much as many Bitcoin full notes like the Americans, the USA guys, but uh, yeah, USA has like uh, more than double uh, the amount of people there. So um, when it comes to Bitcoiners per head, um, the Germans are really maybe leading worldwide. I don't know. And when you look at the government at the same time, they don't have a clue. They really don't do anything about Bitcoin. They also talked about uh, banning proof of work and so on, but it got canceled as far as I know. There might be some backdoors, but uh, let's hope it doesn't come that far. But at least they just 
don't do anything good or bad about Bitcoin. So it's, it can stay that way, uh, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I think that's interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting that the German community is so strong. Uh, the only YouTube channel, educational Bitcoin only channel that is bigger than Block Trainer that I know of uh, is Bitcoin Sessions, uh, BDC uh, Sessions with Ben. He has, I think, like 350,000 followers or subscribers and, and Block Trainer has like around 200,000. If we only just count the followers, I don't know if the other metrics where Block Trainer might be b better than BDC Sessions, but it's extremely uh, impressive how uh strong and big the 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 german community is like that's uh the, it's it's under i think it's underrated how many small content creators that are in. like it's not just like there are two three big ones like there is a, a huge community and and uh i was thinking that's all around like that but now with my podcast when i interview so many people all around the world that's unique in the german bitcoin space like that's really unique to have such an amazing um community uh, of, of of bitcoiners i i only saw it when once i got in touch with uh indian uh content creators where i'm like oh indian is a massive market but there are not so many really great uh indian uh, uh youtube bitcoin only content creators i mean they they fought for even a bitcoin only exchange for, <laughs> for a long time now they have they have some and only in the german speaking area there are a lot of bitcoin only exchanges like that's that's like massive what what the developments uh in in germany are like that that gives me hope but then i listen to the politicians and i'm like ah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that, that's that you also need to consider the uh, 21 or 21 group or the, not a group it's the, the movement or however you want to call it it's like the bitcoin meetups and when you look at the german map 21 or 21 there are so many meetups, like everywhere in Germany, you can go somewhere like at least once a month and talk with common Bitcoiners, not shit corners. And that's really, that's uh, really big. And when you look at the whole map, I mean, I don't know what I would do when, when I'm in France or I don't know, Greece or I don't know, somewhere else in the world. Um, there aren't that meetups as far as I know, maybe some um, big towns or big cities, but uh, not, not that common like it's in Germany. That's uh, they're really, I don't know how many meetups there are in Germany right now, but it's uh, maybe, yeah, over 50, let's say. Ah, I guess over 50 at least, yeah. Like, yeah. It, like there's even in small uh, cities uh, in, in Austria uh, things. I'm, I, I just try to quickly see it up, but uh, there are a lot of, yeah, like there are a lot of points here. <laughs> I, I saw the, I see the map now, uh, but there are a lot of points there, even like in Spain. Uh, there's in Mallorca one. Uh, they are like it's basically East German, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Istanbul, <laughs> Bulgaria, yeah, Poland, Sweden. Yeah, they they are a lot of uh, really cool. Didn't knew that they were so international. Even yeah, really cool. One other topic that I want to discuss before we come to the end routine of the podcast. Um, we know how huge the impact that Bitcoin has on the, on the financial system will be. Um, what do you think or where do you think Bitcoin will also have a huge impact outside of the financial system or will it only be affecting uh, money? Um, basically, money is time or money is basically every. It's just a lifetime. So it uh, also has a much bigger effect than just financially. It's uh, also when you talk to Bitcoiners, they're also every Bitcoiner basically is just happy. He is uh, positive looking in the, to a bright future and uh, yeah, when you talk with other people, other no coiners, it's uh, it isn't like that. I would say in the majority of people, so um, you can see that people are developing um, um, just a more healthy lifestyle. Uh, they are developing a lower time preference. They just start to realize, hey, I can just start saving a Bitcoin, work hard, save in Bitcoin, and I can actually retire on that or buy a home someday. And that's just not possible with uh, fiat money. So it just gives you it gives you hope. It gives you a better life, a healthier life, a healthier whatever. So it's uh, it's the biggest maybe the biggest thing that uh, could improve society on a general level. Mm, I, I like that a lot, and I I, I think so too. Um, I, I will be speaking actually about that topic uh, uh, live in 2050. I think it's called in in Bitcoin Amsterdam. I'm really looking forward to that. 
Um, yeah, really cool. Um, the, the last end routine uh, of the podcast is always one question that is always the same for every guest and one question from the previous guest. The one question is always the same for every guest. What can we learn from you besides Bitcoin and all the things that we already talked about? For me, um, I don't know. It's, I'm not that interesting, I need to say. But uh, <laughs> <I> <laughs> maybe that's, that's the point, yeah. Maybe if even if you're just some guy, some random guy, you can... Uh, I mean, people write me in private, hey, you, I was a shitcoiner or I didn't know anything about money or so and uh, just some, I saw some of your videos and you really changed my life. You, I was depressive and so on and now I'm feeling much better and I see, hey, there's actually, there might be a better life in the future or maybe now even at the moment and so it's developing and it just gives people hope. So even if you're just some random guy, you can just uh, study Bitcoin and uh, spread the word educate people on bitcoin educate people on bitcoin who want to be educated so it's also a big part i think and uh, you can improve people's life uh, and that that's just something really that makes me happy it's uh, you read these mess messages and it's like hey that's a uh, really really how would say it uh, heartwarming or something like that yeah that's yeah, great it, it, it makes me it makes an impact that's that's really cool yeah for for me you are the the german matthew crater like you're, you're really cool and, and your videos are um like not not like uh so dramatic and so like oh see this and it's crashing no, no like it's it's a it's a calm way of explaining bitcoin and all the things that are going on and uh, with a little bit of humor here and there like it's it's really great to see and uh, i love uh, matthew grad and the bitcoin university and then i love your content and it's it's really great to to have so many uh, great uh people in the, in the space the, la the last end routine is uh, where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest <laughs> and it's a it's an interesting question uh i'm not responsible for those questions the questions come from the previous <laughs> <laughs> um finn are you making babies yet no not yet <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a short question. Yeah, that's a very short question. Yeah, um, she was um, Katie Katie from uh, the the Plan B passport, uh, and and she talked about motherhood in the end of the podcast. Uh, and when we stopped recording, uh, she directly got her baby because she heard it in the other room, uh, <laughs> and, and and I think that 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 probably influenced her question a little bit. Uh, <laughs> So that, that's all like, uh, maybe I can uh, alter the the, um, the the question a little bit. Did you look into flag theory and Plan B uh, passport for yourself? I mean, you have a, a, uh, I assume you are, <laughs> have a German passport and you have a, a strong passport. Yes. Therefore, um, did you, in, because of that, still look into uh, flag theory? Yes. Um, so I mean, I, I live in Germany. I'm German, so. Um, Germans always complain all the time, but uh, in the end, it's in German. It really, it's not that bad in Germany yet. It's, it's getting better, uh, worse, and so on. But uh, in the end, we're when you compare it to the rest of the world, we're still living a good life here. But I'm also, um, of course, I'm keeping my eye open. So I'm uh, maybe I'm deciding to move still in Germany, but uh, southwest more, and uh, also I'm trying to uh, visit um, Madeira, not, not Madeira. Uh, but uh, the Funchal, uh, what what was it? Um, Madeira, yeah, it's Madeira. Yeah, I'm, I'm stupid. <laughs> I wanted to visit the Madeira conference next year and just uh, see how it's. Uh, I don't know how the island is. I've never been there, and um, just keep an eye open. But I'm really not sure where I could move as a plan B. Um, it's everything has their pro and cons and um yeah i didn't make a decision yet but i'm keeping my eye open at least let's say that oh is it next year also i, I thought it's only for all four years oh i have to look at it uh, i i thought the bitcoin be era is only uh all four years but it, it it could be next year also like i hope it's next year because i, I was missing it this year and i was like oh i, I really want to go next year uh, and then yeah. people told me, oh, no, it's only all four years. Uh, so I, I hope I hope you're right. <laughs> it's next year. Then we can make our own meetup there, yeah, next year. Yeah, yeah just well, like make our own um, a conference there. Like you and I are the only speakers and, and people can join us. <laughs> 
<laughs> really cool. Um, really cool. Perfect. It's also um, flag fear is one thing. Uh, um, I don't know if Germany actually does actually Germany allow dual citizenship because I know Austrian does not allow and Austrian is one of the uh, only countries in the world that doesn't allow it. Indian, Austria, I think Germany has some exceptions, but they, they allow it. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's some some, uh, some exceptions, but it's not uh, shouldn't be that easy. But uh, yeah, I I didn't look that far yet, so I just need to find a place at the moment where I could move. So then I take the next next step. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, really cool, perfect. And uh, thank you so much, Finn, for being on. Uh, before I let you go, where can people find you, ask you questions, and uh, hear more about you? Um, yeah. I'm Finn from Einfach Bitcoin. I have a G uh, German YouTube channel. So if you're English, uh, that's maybe not for you. But uh, yeah, you can find me on <laughs> on YouTube as Einfach Bitcoin or on Twitter or X, whatever, um, at No Fintech. And that's basically it. So that's the biggest uh, thing I'm doing. Um, yeah, I'm also doing some stuff at Firefish. Um, that's a platform or a marketplace where you can uh, take out Bit Bitcoin back loans. And um, yeah, that's it, basically. Oh, really cool. And for all the English listeners here, uh, if you want to learn German, I think your ch uh, YouTube channel is perfect <laughs> for that. <laughs> and, and you can learn about Bitcoin and about German in the, at the same time. I think that's the, that's a great way to do it. Uh, thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much also for everyone that is watching and listening uh, for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another guest. Bye-bye. <laughs>